in his or her experiencing. Now to be with another in this way means that for the time being, you lay aside the views and values that you hold for yourself in order to enter his world without prejudice. In some sense, it means that you lay aside yourself and this can only be done by a person who is secure enough in himself that he knows he will not get lost in what may turn out to be the strange or bizarre world of the other and can comfortably return to his own world when he wishes. Perhaps that description makes clear that being empathic is a complex, demanding, strong, yet subtle and gentle way of being. I think now I'd like to move on to uh, ask the question, what have we come to know about empathy through research? The answer is that we've learned a great deal. And I'll try to present some of these learnings, giving first some of the general findings, which were of interest to me. But I'm going to reserve until uh, the latter part the analysis of the effects of an empathic client on the recipient, because I think there's a lot to be said about the effects that it has on the, on the recipient. But here then are some of the general statements which can be made with some assurance. I'm going to put them all as though they were knowledge quotes. But we all know that research knowledge is, is limited uh, to the population which was studied, the various qualifications. All of those qualifications should be made in regard to each of the rather blunt statements that, uh, that I'm going to make. Uh, first of all, we know that the ideal therapist is first of all empathic. In a, a study of therapists to get them to uh, formulate their concept of the ideal therapist, and these were therapists from uh, I think at least eight different uh, uh, orientations in therapy. Empathy was placed in the very highest rank out of, out of 12 uh, possible variables. And the, the definition of empathy was similar to that used in this paper. And it corroborates a much earlier study by Fiedler done many years ago. So uh, we may conclude that that the thing that most therapists are trying to do, their, their highest priority, is to be empathic. Now then, uh, another statement I'll make very briefly is that it's been learned that a high degree of empathy in a relationship is associated with various aspects of process and movement in therapy. It is, uh, there is a clear correlation between uh, the degree of empathy in the relationship and the measures of, of process or progress uh, through therapy. Then a finding which is exciting to me and I feel hasn't been um, adequately exploited is that the degree of, of empathy which exists and which will exist in a relationship can be measured and determined very early in the game. In therapy interviews, it can be determined certainly by the fifth interview. The German research says it can be determined in the second interview. And that that's very closely related to the success or lack of success in the, in the total relationship. And to me, that's an exciting finding because it means that uh, perhaps we could save <coughs> enormous amounts of time if we determined um, by some objective <coughs> measure the empathic quality of a relationship early in the game so that we would know whether it was had any high probability of success or not. If, if you find a, a highly empathic quality in a relationship, it is highly probable that the therapist is the one who, who is responsible for that. Then one finding that uh, is a little bit hopeful but also expected is that experienced therapists um, offer a higher degree of empathy than, than inexperienced, which is only to say that maybe over the years uh, therapists do come a little closer to, their, to being the ideal therapist they would like to be. Then uh, 
quite important finding is that um, the better integrated the therapist is within himself, the higher the degree of empathy that he exhibits. Uh, personality disturbance, various kinds of adjustment problems tend to be correlated in the therapist, tend to be correlated with a lower degree of uh, empathic quality in the relationships that he, he offers. And as I've considered this evidence, and also my own experience in the training of therapists, I come to the somewhat uncomfortable conclusion that the more psychologically mature and integrated the therapist is as a person, the more helpful is the relationship he provides. I say that's kind of an uncomfortable conclusion because it really, um, I don't know, throws out a challenge to all of us who are in the helping professions. If we are no better as helpers than we are as people, that's, uh, which, which it seems to me this is somewhat saying, um, that's a sort of sobering thought. Then um, another quite exciting and also sobering finding is from a study by Raskin. Let me describe it briefly. He got interviews from six experienced therapists. If I named their names, you would recognize all of them. I don't know if he's going to publish the names, so I'm not going to name them here. Um, from, from six different orientations. Uh, each therapist selected an interview which he regarded as characteristic and typical of his own work and submitted it for this research purpose. And Raskin picked a large segment of each of those interviews to be rated by 83 therapists of, I've uh, forgotten, eight different uh, orientations. So that here was the therapeutic, the actual therapeutic work of six experts being rated by a large number of, of uh, mostly experienced therapists, some inexperienced, but mostly experienced therapists. And the findings are, well, yeah, two findings. One is interesting. Uh, it is that the degree of empathic quality in those relationships varies enormously. Uh, for the statistically minded, it's at a 0.001 level of significance, the, the difference in the degree of empathic quality. Um, the other finding is that he correlated <coughs> the ratings of the six expert therapists with the ideal therapist that had formerly been um, formed from the judgments of these 83 therapists. And there it is sobering. Two of these well-known therapists correlated positively with the ideal. Four correlated negatively, one at a minus 0.66. Um, now that, uh, in the paper I say, so much for therapy as it is practiced. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, uh, it is a very sobering thing to think that uh, Possibly we are that far from uh, what we would like to be as therapists. The so next finding then is not surprising at all. It is that therapists are quite inaccurate in assessing the quality of their own relationships. Uh, I won't go into the complicated reasoning, but there's good evidence that both clients and unbiased raters are better judges of the empathic quality of the relationship than is the therapist himself. Uh, the practical implication would be that if we want to know uh, whether we are understanding our clients, we should let them tell us. Um,